Hello and welcome back to another episode of Internal Rambles. This is your girl Rochelle. This is another bonus episode, a reality recaps. I'm going to be recapping the last two episodes of Married at First Sight and I'm going to try to do a quick, fast, and dirty (laughs) recap of I believe the last two episodes of Ready to Love is where I left off. I'm going to just try to run through it as quick as possible. But if you listen to my last episode, my main episodes releases every Thursday, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, you would know why there was no recap of last week's Married at First Sight. (laughs) I'm struggling with this season. First of all, I know when I've watched previous seasons and I've watched recaps of previous seasons, a lot of people feel as though these seasons drag on. This season is dragging, but also this season has been frustrating me and I just didn't have the energy nor the time, honestly, nor did I try to make the time to recap last week's episode, but I said I would do it. And here we are. I said I was going to do it over the weekend. It's Monday late night. Um, But I'm getting out there. Y'all didn't believe in me, did y'all? I hope you did. I do try to, if I say I'm going to do something, I do try to do it. So here we are. Uh, My reality recaps are my bonus episodes. So my main content, I definitely make sure or try my darndest to get out. But the bonus episodes, they really release whenever I'm able to release them. So I'm going to recap these last two episodes. I would love to know what y'all are thinking about this season. I released my audio on YouTube. Comment over there. What do you think? Well, I'll talk about this more at the end, but I'd like to know what y'all are thinking about this season. Am I the only one who has been a little frustrated, (laughs) a little agitated? I don't know. But anyways, let's get into first up is Mary at First Sight, San Diego. We're recapping the month of anniversaries, and then they are the next episode, which is the most recent episode. They're meeting with Dr. Pepper and they're doing the typical letter to yourself, letter to your younger self thing that they do each season so let's get into these episodes all right y'all I got my notes I'm gonna try to it's it's really it's challenging to do multiple episodes at one time but I'm gonna try to go through and summarize just what occurred with each couple and then just maybe some thoughts on where they are but the one couple I'm gonna start should I start with them No, I'm going to end with this couple. I'll end with this couple. So, um, what I will say, I won't be talking much about Lindy and Miguel. Just because I really feel like not much is happening with them, but they are doing better. That's not a negative thing. I think they're putting in the work. I will talk a little bit more about what I think about them in the next episode, but in this month anniversary episode, I actually didn't even write anything down. <laughs> they are putting the work, so I won't actually be mentioning anything about them for the month anniversary episode. Uh, but for next episode, I will talk about them. Kristen and Mitch, so they go on their month anniversary, they do some yoga. The real key point about Kristen and Mitch in this episode is they at the end of the month anniversaries all the couples get together and they have dinner and they discuss just kind of where you are what you're feeling and how things are going or or whatever and Mitch kind of says you know I've never had to really give my all in a relationship I'm trying my best I'm doing all that I can and Kristen really says her piece and she's she says to him you signed up for this you should be giving your all I don't think you are I'm the one that's compromising putting in all this effort not even getting to do what I want to do say what I want to say I'm tired of putting all this effort where do I get to do what I want to do basically where is Kristen at 
in this marriage. And so she puts it out there like, I'm tired of this mess. I'm tired of conforming to your way of life, compromising on what I want to do. Something's going to have to change. So good, you know, kudos to Kristen for really putting it out there and saying, I ain't, I'm not going to be able to keep doing this much longer. In this month anniversary episode, if you may remember from a previous episode, Stasia said that she wanted Nate to sign a postnup. So they do sign the postnup. And Nate, in a later or in a different part of the episode, said that he doesn't feel that Stasia trusts him, that really a lot of her communication has just been her questioning his effort how he feels his commitment and so that's you know very hurtful to him and so I think that while I think we all have been questioning Nate's commitment (laughs) I think that that was something that she needed to hear too because I I can imagine it it may not feel good to constantly have your every action your every word question and do you really like me are you really here do you really want to be married I would good I you know I can imagine that can be overwhelming and, and and agitating and hurtful too if he really is feeling her and is really developing feelings for her yeah I would I could imagine that that would be upsetting so um she seems to at that point really kind of be listening to him and so if you remember in a a previous episode when they were saying when she asked him where are you on the spectrum of like versus you know you're really into me you love me one to ten she was at an eight and he was at a four but he's moved up to seven to eight in this episode so he's getting there (laughs) um alexis and justin they at the dinner with the other couples they get into an argument and basically Justin's I think he kind of shares that he feels as though he's making progress etc and Alexis is just like not moving she's definitely shut down and Justin's like hey you wanna you wanna say something what's going on you know and Alexis like I'm chilling I'm I'm at dinner I'm eating and then he gets upset and, and whenever he shows any sort of elevated emotion, she just can't handle it. And he's an emotional guy. And so it's like, I think she's going to have to, first of all, as I've been saying, they do not know how to communicate with each other. But when you have someone that doesn't like emotions and they're dating someone who's overly emotional, something's going to have to give there's going to have to be a common ground. And I can understand that because I, as someone who in later in life, I'm learning how to identify my emotions and express them. I really don't care to, it's not my, I don't, I really don't like to date overly emotional men because I just kind of, that's just, I'm not that way. So I, I can't understand it. So I I do understand her perspective, but I think she, the way that she reacts to him, she, she shuts down and you, when you're having a confrontation or just an, a dis, when you're having a discussion, you, that's not communicate, shutting down is not communication. So they have a big blow up at the end of this episode. So more to come about that. Last but not on the least, Morgan and Ben, the hot mess of the most hot messes. And this is the part, and if you listen to my last episode, this is the part I had to forward through it. They frustrate me. She frustrates me. And a lot of people get on Ben. And I think not a lot. Some people do. And they miss the part that Morgan has never forgave, forgiven Ben. Even when she has said, I'll give you a chance there's a thing when when someone holds grudges or they have trust issues if they really don't reconcile that they never really fully as someone who has trust issues huh, I know what I'm talking about if you don't you you have to get to a place of acceptance if I say I forgive you I have to truly forgive you it doesn't mean you forget but your actions and your conversations moving forward have to really mirror I forgive you she stay you lie you everything you lie you lie so she's upset because she learns that Justin or sorry Ben has been talking to Justin about her whenever he's frustrated he runs to Justin and Justin which is ridiculous puts 
Ben on speakerphone, unbeknownst to Ben, and Alexis hears this. So she runs to Morgan. And it's like, what type of girl code and guy code are we breaking? What male, because we do it as women. When you when you're having a disagreement, you want a sounding board, you go to your boy and they all are in they all talk about what's going on in their marriage. They do it. It's actually built into the show. They have the all the women get together and then all the men get together. But for whatever reason, Justin feels or Ben feels really close to Justin. So he goes to Justin, which is wrong because Justin can't keep his mouth closed. So I think Ben need to have a conversation with Justin. Like, yo, if I'm going to be coming to you and confiding in you, you can't be going to your wife. And if you do, she can't be then running to Morgan. And she says that he says negative things about her family, but he says he's not. Who knows? I think that they both started off really wrong. And they, I think they both say hurtful things to each other or about each other, but I'm not saying Ben is correct. I do think he should be able to talk to Justin. And maybe he is saying some grimy stuff. But I don't want it to be lost on the fact that Morgan has never forgiven him. And she probably will never forgive him. And she stay, he, she stay going at this man's neck. Like, how can you build a relationship when you're always on 25 in a conversation? And one of the things I noticed, and I don't know which episode this was, they're not sleeping in the same room. Like, there's no building of a relationship with them. So, and and, um, when you see Ben, he looks so stressed and, and just depressed. And she is, I'm not saying he is in the right, but she is definitely breaking this man down. Because every time they talk, it's just, she Aunt berates him it's just like oh you lie you lie I can't trust you you're horrible Whatever. even after she says I'm gonna give you a chance and there's nothing wrong with Ben talking to his friend you know if he's saying grimy stuff I mean honestly y'all I mean you never really I don't he has said he hasn't Justin has not confirmed the things that he has said you know and maybe you know context but Morgan, you're not in the clear either. You you have some things you need to work on as well. And that's the month anniversary episode. <laughs> okay, so let's get into the episode where they meet with Dr. Pepper. So let's get back into to Ben and Morgan. I didn't like this with Dr. Pepper because I feel like Dr. Pepper gave Morgan a pass and did not address Morgan's behavior she does not know how to communicate she does not know how to address concerns and she has never forgiven Ben that was not addressed at least we didn't see it and Ben's like oh you know I have issues with myself I really had expectations and on her I placed expectations and he's always apologizing he's like you know and now I'm in therapy to work on myself he he's doing all of this work and Morgan's just doing nothing but yelling at him and being ridiculous. And I don't see the work that she's doing to even try with Ben because, like I said, she is not forgiving him. And so he is, she don't want to deal with him. And so they do, they did the whole letter to the self where you're supposed to get another insight into who the person is. Ben read his letter. She was like, I don't trust you. Because whatever I say to you that's personal, you run and you put it against me. So I'm not going to read my letter. And exactly. So she would not read the letter to Ben and she runs away or walks. She doesn't run, but walks away. Because she is not in this. I don't know how they're going to move. She is not in this marriage. I don't know how they're going to move forward. They mentioned in the last episode that they're separated. It's like, bro, already I've been together a month. She does. She's not putting in the work to even try to mend those fences. So... I don't think they're going to make it past decision day, honestly. Okay. Stassi. Oh, no. Let's go to Alexis and Justin. So after the whole debacle at the dinner with everyone, they do talk it through. And basically just kind of they reconcile that we can't. It seems like it sounds like they kind of like we can't see eye to eye. So we're going to let it go. But with Dr. Pepper... Um, Alexis shares that she 
has grown up around strong black women and so any sort of expression of emotion or vulnerability crying is a sign of weakness it lends the door to be open for someone to take advantage of you etc so she is not comfortable with showing any sort of vulnerability and so that's why kind of I think her and Justin clash because he's so vulnerable he's so emotional and she's just like yo back that up I'm not I can't deal with that so Dr. Pepper shares that for a successful marriage like there has to be vulnerability you should the one person you should feel safe being vulnerable vulnerable with is your husband and so we'll see what happens with that they do really just need to learn how to communicate with each other and uh justin gets upset during and tearful and understandably so during the meeting with dr pepper because he shares that he's gonna have to give up his dog because the dog is just too aggressive and wasn't progressing in the training and so it's not really safe to bring him back in the home particularly with another dog so Justin's gonna lose his dog so that's really pretty sad um and so with uh Stasi and Nate Stasia meets with Nate's father who was in the military and was a single dad and he gets emotional just kind of sharing that dad gets emotional sharing because she asked him how did you do it how did you raise these kids by yourself and he was like I just had to do it. people ask me all that time it's like I there was no other choice I just had to do it and so just kind of I think Stasia meeting Nate's dad helped her to understand a bit more about how he is and why the way he is where his father never really expressed or expressed emotion and Nate was like I don't think I've ever seen my father cry and Nate's father said yeah I I I, I raised my children to be strong and not be overly emotional so I think that was good for them and then Stasia uh, let Nate meet her best friend and her uh, the, her best friend's family that she stayed with for a year during I think her senior year and that gave some insight too so they seem to really be making positive strides with each other and Miguel and Lindy they met with um Dr. Pepper and honestly you know, I think one of the issues even though I'm not a huge fan of Miguel I think with Lindy she just needs to mature more and I think that she's had some Things that have happened to her when she was growing up or just experiences that have been roadblocks for her so I think she will be okay if she can manage her own mental health etc but they ended up telling each other that they love each other they're talking about raising kids and what that may be like so they they're they've made some strides Mitch and Kristen meet with Dr. Pepper and um Dr. Pepper pretty much tells Mitch that he needs to start showing his affection to Kristen, giving her affirmations, because that's what Kristen needs. And he says that he will work on that. And during the, you know, they're reading the letters to their self, he does show some emotion. He cries. So that, that, you know, we'll see what happens. He was able to break down a few walls and Dr. Pepper says you have to learn to get past your fears and trust Kristen so we'll see with that and kind of one thing that happened in towards the beginning of the show I forgot about this the women were talking together and then the men were talking and you know M Morgan's doing her thing oh he Ben be lying he this he that I can't and so someone was like well let's go let's go confront Ben he's with the guys let's, which I thought was super immature but whatever and so Morgan's like, yeah, he be lying. He be talking to Justin, da, 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 da. And so I love this part. Nate was like, you know, I understand what you're saying maybe about Morgan, but why you be so hostile all the time? You be so, you be at Ben's neck all the time. How is he supposed to get back all the, how is he supposed to get through all this hostility? Well, he lied. I understand that, but he be lying. And I love that he called out the fact that she be at his throat. What Ben supposed to do, little old Ben, and he's not little at all. 
but I know he not. He can't. He looks so destroyed. He can't fight through all that hostility. She be looking like she be ready to throw them bowls, bust them guns. <laughs> like, but what did you do it? So my thoughts on all these couples, Morgan and Ben ain't gonna make it. Justin and Alexis, if they can learn how to communicate effectively and positively, positively with each other, possibly. Stacy and Nate, it's looking up. They could make it. Lindy and Miguel, this is the best I've ever seen them. Possibly. Kristen and Mitch, I don't know. Mitch, if he can be compromising and accepting, they could make it. So I would say last week's episode, I was like, I'm done with this show. I can't take it. This week's episode, I'm like, there's a little hope. So kudos to that, but also... Please, how many more episodes? I don't even want to look because I don't even want to be stressed out. I don't know why they draw this out for 65 episodes. Let's wrap this up. They be talking about the same things, going over the same issue. Let's see some progression and let's get to decision day at this point. Please and a thank you. Okay, y'all. So let's do a quick rundown of the last two episodes of Ready to Love. So two weeks ago, the women invited the men to meet their best friends. So some of the key things that happened in this episode is that Trinika had justice meet with one of her friends or actually i think there were two friends and that did not go very well he i i'm not a fan of justice he was not really answering questions he was very evasive they would ask him something and he would just be like i just i'm just gonna let i think they had asked him what he feels like his future holds like you know where do you see yourself in five years type of a question he's like i just wherever God tells me I just go wherever God tell me to go like he's just he doesn't know how to communicate they were not they were not fond of him they thought he was full of BS and they were not off <laughs> the money with that they were on the money with it um uh, Dor uh Dorian had Swayze meet one of her friends and her friend really turned up on him and was asking about some of the women that he's dated in the last few years and it came out that he really hasn't dated many black women in the last few years and somehow that conversation got twisted with them saying that he don't date black women and I didn't see him say that he just has said he hasn't dated many he hasn't dated any black women in the last few years, but he goes on to say, like, I do date black women. The daughter of my mother is black. My mother is black. So I don't know how they twisted that. I don't know why that was so offensive. You know, he's like, I just, I give, I'm open to whoever. And just because maybe in the last few years he hasn't dated black women, I don't know how that turned into, I don't date black women at all. And they're on a show where it's only going to be, I don't think I've ever really seen any Hispanics on Ready to Love, so that really didn't make too much sense. So I'm not a fan of Dorian. I know I've mentioned that. And then Charisse, Charisse had her friend meet Samson and really, really liked Samson, really felt like that would be a really good fit for her. So that was a really positive meeting. So at this End of the show, it was one guy was going home. The last, uh, the bottom two were LJ. The women just really feel like he's just kind of friend vibes. He's not putting all the effort. And Justice, because he a hot mess. He don't put in no effort. He has this big thing of I'm not chasing no woman. They can't communicate with him. And they finally, at the end of that episode, sent Justice packing. Chuck up the deuces. Adios, amigo. <laughs> Bye. Okay, so last week's episode, it was the men's turn to introduce the women to truth tellers in their life. So basically, someone that's going to be honest and really meet the women and say what, ask them really good, hard hitting questions and say whatever needs to be said to the women and really 
give the guys some good insight on whether or not the women are going to be good fit for them. So one of the things that happened in this is that Randall is still dating three women, which I don't like. I really did. One of the things that kind of irritates me at this stage in the game, why are y'all still dating 85 people? It really should be narrowed down to one, maybe two by this point. Some have, but Randall has still stuck to his three, Kayla, Trinika, and uh, Jamila. And Randall had his ex-girlfriend meet the women. And the Randall's ex thought that Trinika was not genuine. Thought that Jamila's answers was too much. Everything was too much focused on Randall. It's kind of like, where are you in the equation? She really liked Kayla. Thought that Kayla had calm energy and that's something that rant that she believes randall needs in his life so kayla was the winner in this one and swayze had dorian meet one of his friends and that did not go well so this is like number two date where dorian's meeting well let me rephrase it it didn't go it didn't go bad it just it could have gone better they're still having communication issues she rolls her eyes a lot and she I don't know it's just they you, you can tell that they kind of rub each other the wrong way but he's still trying to plug through for some reason I don't know so Swayze's friend was just like you know take it day by day but you could tell that there is some awkward energy between the two of y'all Samson had uh, an ex meet a few of the women and they really like Sharice. I think she's, to me that my, oh, well, let me get that at the end. Let me not do that. <laughs> so the hot mess of the episode, LJ had his ex meet Trinika and Looney. Come to find out, they had been broken up for several months, which is still pretty fresh, but they had still been sleeping together at least within the last month they had done the horizontal boogie and it's like why would you bring someone that you still kind of have dealt with but also the woman was like are you still in love with him and she was like yeah you know i still love him girl what? <laughs> she is not even over lj and lj is like you know i really i'm really trying to move forward you know I have love for her, but you know, breaking the woman's heart all over again. That was a hot mess. Like, it was just, why would you bring someone you, and I guess I understand that maybe they are at different points. He's moving on, but I bet you he knows that that woman has not moved on from him. So I just thought that was kind of trash at LJ, honestly, to bring that woman to meet these women that he's dating and trying to get with, so into it so then another kind of dramatic thing that happened is a few of the daters got together just to have a meal and that was mike and lj dorian and sharice and dorian and sharice get together got got into it because dorian and i don't even know how it started but Sharice was like, you're not a friend. You've been fake. You've been phony. You've been saying you're my friend, but you're not a friend. And Dorian was like, yeah, I have been fake. I have been phony. I'm playing the game to get what I want. Did I mention I don't like Dorian? She just keeps showing it week after week after week after week. Ever since she did what she did to that one girl who had trauma. And she just shows like she's not a nice person. So the next woman to go, I'm hoping, is Dorian. And in the in the men's lounge, they tried to put it on Sharice. And it was like, no, Dorian was, I mean, Sharice was calling Dorian out on her BS. And it needed to be done. And Sharice can match Dorian's energy. So that was the perfect person to do it. But anyways, at the end of the episode, one woman was going home, and the two bottom was Trinika and Looney. With Trinika, according to the men, the men feel as though she's not communicating effectively, and they can't really connect with her. And she was upset about that. She was like, what y'all mean? I'm mad. I'm upset. I am putting in the effort. I'm, I'm, you know, anyways. And then Looney, they really kind of feel like she jokes a lot. She had, I don't, I don't, I think maybe they've 
get friend vibes from her. But yo, Looney is a vibe. She is always smiling. She reminds me of me when I'm when I have a little personality. I like to joke. I like to, you know, you always gonna well you're not always because people be wanting me to joke. <clears throat> and I can't joke on cue, but I like to tell jokes and just be funny and that good positive energy is either you're with it or you're not. Take it or leave it. And I guess maybe when you're trying to get a deeper connection, that can be a barrier. But, you know, at the end of the day, they felt Looney wasn't ready to love. And, you know, and he I like the way that Samson put it. He was just like, you're just not ready to love us. And that was very kind. She, Her man out there, she's a very sweet person, it seems. So I like Looney. Her man is out there. And that is my recap of... Mary at first sight and ready to love. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna keep plugging with Mary at first sight. I don't know. Upcoming, it's gonna get challenging because, like I, I've been saying, I am traveling this month, so I don't know if I, I may have to double up again. I'm hoping not to do that. But ready to love. Honestly, this is probably gonna be my last ready to love recap. I'm just gonna wait to the end of the season, probably, because I think they're probably getting close to the end of the season, and just wrap up the season. So this is most likely gonna be my last ready to love recap until the finale, and then I'll recap everything. But Married at First Sight, we'll keep plugging on with the 73 episodes they have per season. <laughs> And I hope that you enjoy this, but I would like to know, what are your thoughts? Head on over to Internal Rambles, No Space at YouTube. That's how you search for me over there. And leave me a comment on Murder at First Sight. Who's going to make it? Who's not? Are you feeling this season? I don't know about this season. This season's a little rough for me. And also, if you watch Ready to Love, what do you think about the daters on there? And thank you for tuning in. You can reach Internal Rambles pretty much anywhere you get your podcast content. iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google, Amazon. And again, like I said, on YouTube, subscribe to me so that you get my content immediately as I release it. Tell your mama, your sister, your brother, your cousin, your baby daddy, whoever, about me so that they can get this great content too. And then also be on the lookout, as I've been saying, for my anniversary episode. It's going to be great October 15th. But also, I've got Read with Rochelle and all a lot of good stuff. Please listen to my previous content. Thank you for tuning in. And until next episode, this is your girl Rochelle. Talk to you soon.